Hello guys, John with you again, and we're back. Yes, we're back now with the weathering. Okay, so we're all now set for a new stage in this thing. We're now doing the weathering. And as you can see, the uh, I'm after giving it a glass coat after the decals. And as you can see, the glass coat is actually after bringing out even better that pre shading. Okay, just for some weird reason, it made it stand out that little bit better. Okay. So now you can see the effects of all the uh, that nice pre-shading in it. You can see the dark and the light panels. See them there? Okay. Very, very subtle. You don't want anything stark. The whole point of this whole thing about weathering is to keep it subtle, make it look natural. If you do it too heavy and you know if, if it's too stark, it just looks wrong. So keep it nice, keep it natural, and uh, don't go overboard. Less is more. That is most important. Less is more. Even when you're heavy weathering. Okay. Uh, don't go overboard. Go as heavy as you you know you think that is needed, and kind of stop at that. We've all been we've all made the mistakes. We've gone overboard. I've done it one or two, one or a couple of my vehicles there. I've gone really overboard in the weathering. I've enjoyed what I'm doing. I'm a great crack. But when you look at it, it's unrealistic. It's totally unrealistic. Okay, and even sort of medium weathering to a certain degree is a pretty is a bit under unrealistic. And what I'm going doing now with the chipping, again. Not really realistic, but it makes the model look good. Okay, and that's what it's all about, making the model look good. Make it look interesting without making it look ridiculous. Okay, so in this video I'm going to do some chipping. The next video then I'm going to give it a, a wash. The video after that then we'll do a little bit of a dot filtering. Okay, so the wash is in kind of two parts. It'll be uh, a general overwash where we cover the whole vehicle in a wash, which is kind of semi uh, some people call it a filtering a filter coat I just call it just an overall wash and then we'll be doing sort of a highlight wash where we kind of go in around pin wash going around high little areas making sure that in in the creases and things like that they're all done but that's for the next video let's worry about this one first okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a bit of chipping what do we need for chipping a couple of basic tools now there are plenty and plenty of types of chipping out there okay this is just one way of doing it this is my way of doing it I have tried loads and loads of different ways of, of doing the chipping um, I've done uh, a bit where you use sponge you know a bit of a broken off sponge and do the dabbing on um, I've done the chipping with the brushes and uh, hairspray chipping there's another type it's where you sort of give it the undercoat give it a glass coat over your undercoat then paint your uh, then say give it a layer of uh, hairspray yes women's hairspray believe it or not coat of women's hairspray leave the hairspray dry in and then do say this coat over it and as soon as this coat over it is done then don't uh, don't gloss coat it and then use water and a brush and remove little parts of it and what happens is the, the paint kind of underneath or on top kind of just disintegrates a bit and kind of bubbles up and mo removes in certain sections and that's a sort of a, a heavy chipping method um, it's good for say you could paint the vehicle in this color here paint your uh, you know stop at that like then paint uh, then give it a good coat of hairspray when the hairspray dries then give it a coat of white paint right? and then start removing bits and pieces here and there and it's sort of uh, a nicely weathered um, winter camouflage okay so that's an another way of doing things but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a bit of uh, chipping right? chipping and scratches okay and this is how I do the chipping and scratches and that's all I'm going to do in this vehicle is chipping and scratches okay and uh, you'll see even just from doing chipping and scratches it's, it's quite nice it's quite simple but quite nice and quite easy like everything else it, it's, it takes up a certain amount of time it's not a kind of a, an instant quick job you still have to be careful you still have to kind of you know follow the steps and all that so what we need for that we need two brushes well I use two brushes okay I use a sort of a, a medium sized brush it's about a size two round tip and uh, a two zero okay two zero okay this is a sable brush my favorite brush 
it's starting to get on a bit I must uh, I must replace it soon enough and uh, the other brush then like I said it's, it's around a two I don't know because these are a set of Ming, Ming brushes that I bought they're not bad they're not a bad brush at all um, you buy them a little sort of a pre-made set I think there was about six brushes in the set and they were quite reasonable and uh, they're Ming okay so two brushes You'll also need your chipping paint, whatever paint you're going to use for the chipping. Some people on this now would use, say, Hull Red, which would be a kind of a nice colour because it would uh, indicate the um, where the paint is chipped away and it's chipped down to the uh, to the to the, 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 the red primer. Okay, the uh, red primer that would have been painted on the vehicle before they're painted. But I kind of prefer this one here. Right, this is my sort of lately. Okay, I've started moving on to this one. And it's XF84 from to me at Dark Iron. Okay, here we go, I'll just hide the light there. XF84, Dark Iron. Okay, from to me. So, like everything else, give it a, a decent enough shake. Uh, like I said, the great thing about to me paints, once you have them mixed, they don't really take that much of a, an old shaking once you kind of use them regularly enough. And uh, give a good old shaky, All right? And again, as usual, you know, we got a nice bit of paint there on the lid. We use up that, and we keep, I, I, I mix my paint on the lid. So, we're going to start off now with a heavy brush, okay? Another th other things you might need is just a little container with a bit of uh, your, your cleaner, um, for cleaning, keeping your brushes clean, and things like that. And I already explained that I use. Uh, um, surgical spirit that's the cut that's my my go-to cleaner for brushes and for my white for my uh, airbrush I use the whole same thing and a bit of a bit of kitchen roll as well then for just for wiping it off okay so we're gonna get some paint on our brush not too much you see what I did was I, I dipped it in just wiped off any sort of drippy bits off in the edge of the thing right now with the th with the heavier brush we're going to go around edges Okay, all these all these nice sharp edges. So they'd be the first thing to, to lose their sort of little bit of paint on the edge. Nice real sharp edges like that. Anything would anything would sort of chip the paint off, and in my mind it would anyway, right? So what you do is you just lightly touch around the edges like that. Not an extravagant. I'm going to just do this uh, one panel, this front panel for you. But the same applies throughout the whole vehicle. Same method, no matter where you go on the vehicle. You're going to have a little bit more on, on the bottom. Don't know why, but it just seems to be the way. Okay. Just along, along the sharp edges. Take a see, see the way I went up over it there like that. You can do that too. Where you kind of nice big chunk of paint is missing off it. I did say I'm going to go kind of reasonably heavy with the chipping in this vehicle. <coughs> Just to make it kind of stand out a little bit. Okay, so that's say, the first little bit. And as you can see already, it looks like where paint has just been just been chipped off the edges. Right? Now when you go to the top, make sure that you, if you've got a little bit there, that you've got it across the top as well. It's not just, say, all to one side. Right. 
because when it chips off to say the corner it's going to take an extra little bit of paint to off, off with it you gotta kind of think how, how 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 would it react and you know looking around say say farm machinery and stuff like that you get a great idea from that and the world, things that have been worked and used and, and, and I wouldn't say abused but used well right well maintained but they're not really they're, they're not really worried too much on the uh, how pretty it looks okay all right so we're going to clean off our, our heavy brush now we go on to the lighter brush okay so with the lighter brush now we're going to do some uh, some light kind of a scratching work okay so where where paint is kind of chipped and scratched down so we start off here on, on, on little areas here where we've already come down with the paint okay see here now we've already come down with the paint reason for thin brushes just to keep it sort of in scale and realistic all right very very lightly drag your brush down along like that okay not too much paint on the brush always remember that right and you can kind of bring it off you can even sort of really kind of feather it that is really really light towards the ends don't be afraid to go, go across the decals right Now when we've got, say, little sections like these, these are sort of a pistol port, the edges of that will get a bit of chipping. So do the edges of that along. Same idea. Nice and light. Kind of makes them stand out a bit. I just want to kind of make it look a bit interesting. All right. Same thing on each of the nuts, just a little bit on each of the nuts. You have to have a bit of chipping on your nuts, do you know what I mean? First things that get chipped are your nuts. Yes, John has been rude again. Sorry. Apologise. I don't really, I don't apologise. It is me. And you don't always have to sort of start on the edges. You can start in the middle. And it doesn't always have to be a constant line. You can be, you can kind of break up the line a bit. See there, where the line is slight, slight you know, thick and thin and slightly patchy end up with a nice effect with that as well and try not to go all to say the same direction with them okay and here's another little type then again where you're just using little dots you're dotting it on okay you'll see there for the uh, the paint would have kind of just blistered off. Okay. Here's a question for you. Why do people hold their breath when they're painting? Well, I do anyway. I've noticed it there with a couple of other people. I mean, just when you start going, you take, a, take a breath in. And let it out. <laughs> I kind of notice that, that I, 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 do, I tend to do that. Probably one or two of you do as well. You never know. Is it, is it an actual thing or is it just me? 
If it's just me, then I'm strange. I mean, I always knew I was strange anyway. You have to be strange. You have to have a bit of a uh, bit of madness. Wouldn't the world be a, a one hell of a boring place if we were all if we were all the same? It wasn't a bit of a quirk or a bit of strangeness in people. It'll be one boring world, I'll tell you that much. You need the diversity. You need strange people. Different cultures, different things. You learn loads. I myself, I, 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 one thing I love is travel. I loved travelling and learning about how, just how different people live and what's normal to me, I'd say to myself God, how, how do people do such and such a thing? That's the way they grow up and that's what's normal to them and then you learn to kind of uh, you learn to sort of take little little hints and tips from them uh, on how to live your life and stuff and it enriches your own life then as well I find no, I don't want to go too bad in that, but like I said, we, we are going kind of pretty heavy weathering. And you do, the, do that all over, and then we go on to our next step. And you'll see how good all that will kind of mix in. No, I did go a little bit overboard purely because we're, we're, we're like I said, we're, we're, this is um, a one really just to show you how good and different things you can kind of get with it. But as you can see, that, okay. That's a nice chipping effect, okay, and scratches, and we're paint to sort of lift it off and all that. Now remember, that hasn't had any of its washes or anything like that yet. This is the first stage, this is not the finished stage. With all the uh, other effects we'll do afterwards, it'll all kind of blend in and it'll, it'll start to look a lot better, believe me. Believe me, you'll just have to bear with it, okay. So I'm going to carry on now, and I'm going to do that all over the vehicle. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's quite tedious. It might take me, uh, might take me a day or two, because I only spend two hours in the evenings up here, and uh, I'm already between setting up and everything else. I've already have to sort of spend in a half an hour. So I'm going to do another this for another little bit of a while. You don't want to get too bored of it either, because the more, the more. Of the things like that you'll do, you'll say to yourself, I've been at this for ages, I'll try and rush it off or whatever, get it finished fast. And you'll find then that, say, your first side is perfect, and by the time you say, go move around your vehicle, bam, ba bump ba bump ba bump ba bump by the time you get to, say, the last, the last little panel, or the back even, it's just, it just looks thrown, thrown at, thrown together. You want to kind of keep that consistency all over, okay? So, what I suggest is you do a little bit this evening, watch a bit of telly, listen to a bit of music or whatever if you find yourself getting bored and then go back and do it another little bit at another stage don't try and do it all in one but if, you, if you're if you sort of in the humour and you're, you know, and you're, you're working away and you can get it all done in one then you may get it all done in one but uh, the main thing is don't try and, uh, and do it if you're starting to get bored or starting to get kind of a little bit pissed off with the way things are going just stop, come away from it Take a break, come back then again, and uh, continue on where you left off. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a break, continue where I left off. So in the next video, lads, like I said, we'll be giving it a, a filter wash, or an, an overall wash. I'll show you how I make it up. Um, it's simple, white spirit and oil paint. So if you're, say, working along with me for the next one, have some white spirit ready and some oil paints okay um because of the color of the vehicle i won't be going for black i'll be going for more of a dark brown yes a dark brown with my wash um i was asked today by somebody um what kind of uh wash would i use for uh for winter camouflage uniforms for germans and i'd go with a brown wash myself personally black wash just a little bit too stark but a brown wash is grand because it'll show up say like what would stain it when the uh, when the snow starts to kind of melt a bit 
ground turns to sludge and as you know yourself snow starts getting brown and dirty and things like that so if you're walking around in it and things like that you're not exactly kind of you know out in your Sunday best you're, you're throwing yourself to the ground you're working away here and there so you'll have bits of dirt and things like that and it gets in around the creases so brown is a good colour to go with and a nice dark brown but always remember make your wash up really 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 light okay because you can always darken it or give it a second coat but if it's too dark to begin with you've, you, you've gone overboard and you've kind of sometimes you can end up, end up ruining ruining a figure uh, or, or a vehicle if you sort of if your wash is just that little bit too heavy so lighten it off and build it up nice and slowly so in the next one we'll be covering washes this one we did the chippings and uh, like I said this is just one type of chipping there are many many other variations and other different types of chipping uh, this is one have a look at the other ones lads there's loads of plenty of tutorials of people out there giving giving you uh, different ways to do different types of chips okay so I'm gonna leave it at that I'll catch you on the next one so uh, thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and if you have subscribed like I always say thank you very much because I am really really appreciative I really really am I do like the, uh, the, the all the nice lovely comments I get and uh, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up lads thumbs up and uh, hit the bell okay so by hitting the bell you'll be notified as soon as I upload another video now whether you're notified or not anyway I do not know but it does help the kind of the channel helps the channel kind of move up in the ratings not that I'm really after ratings but the more people the view it and the more people are out there that you know have been frightened off by say some of the uh, some of the much say seasoned better uh, competition style modelers right nothing against them and like I said I, 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 I admire them they're absolutely fabulous but not everybody has that kind of skill simple as that not everybody has that kind of skill so by watching my ones you get something for somebody that like me that has no skill whatsoever but I can do this so if I can do it then you can do it believe me believe me you can do it okay so get out there and give it a go give it a go and the best way to get out there and give it a go is go out and buy yourself a kit build it enjoy it paint it and weather it I'll catch you in the next one lads stay safe and uh, be nice to one another oh yeah Merry Christmas to all <laughs>